Hi, my name is Amy Eisenstein, and today we're gonna talk about how not to stop fundraising in the middle of this coronavirus crisis. I know that the world is topsy-turvy, and you may be working from home for the first time, your kids may be home, you don't know what's ahead, but I am here to tell you, do not stop fundraising. That's gonna be the theme of today's video and today's conversation. So we have to acknowledge that it's not business as usual. Uh, the world as we know it has changed in the last week to two weeks, and we need to adapt even if we don't know what's coming. And your clients, your organization, your mission needs you now more than ever. And so we need to figure out ways that we are going to survive this crisis as organizations, as individuals, as communities, as a country, as a world, and we will get through this together. So the first thing I wanna talk about is making sure that you are not putting your head in, a st in the sand and pretending that it's not happening. It absolutely is. Your donors know it ha it's happening. Your clients know it's happening. And so everybody's filled with anxiety and dread and you can be a calming presence in the midst of all the chaos. So acknowledging that it's not business as, us as usual, although I am gonna strongly encourage you to continue with your fundraising in a way that acknowledges what's going on around you. So I have to say, you may be working at home for the first time. I've been working from home for more than 12 years. So I have a a few tips and tricks up my sleeve that I'll be sharing over the coming weeks and days and months. Um, but the first thing is to get comfortable with technology. So many conferences, gatherings, meetings are have all been canceled. And the question is, does the world stop just because we can't meet face to face? I mean, I've been talking about the best way to fundraise for years now is by sitting down with a person and meeting with them in, in person, face to face. Right now, for the next few weeks or next few months, that's not possible. Does that mean that your fundraising comes to a screeching halt? Not at all. Pick up the phone, learn to get on video chat, and I encourage you to think about the ways that your donors communicate with their kids and grandkids. I promise you that the vast majority of them do use some sort of video chat technology. If they use FaceTime, you should try and use FaceTime. If they use Skype, you should try and use Skype. If they use Google, uh, Hangouts or chat or whatever it is, that's what you should use too. You know, I use Zoom to communicate with my clients, but if that doesn't work for them or for your donors, then you will want to try and adapt and use what works for them. So the key during this whole crisis is to connect with your donors, uh, write, call, video chat, and continue the conversation. Uh, don't ignore them and feel like you have to leave them alone. We're all in, uh, I don't know what it's called, social isolation right now, um, but it's more important than ever to be connected. Think about your donors who are home by themselves or scared, even if they're with their families. It's actually a perfect time to call and check in and just see how they're doing. You don't need to necessarily be asking for gifts right at this moment, but do call and lend an ear, see how they're doing, offer a shoulder to cry on if that's necessary or appropriate. And if they're wondering how to help, if they're still in a position to help, if they're looking for some way to give back or to feel good or have control over their lives, they may relish the opportunity to provide you with some stability to support. Um, you know, I know too many organizations that feel like we shouldn't be bothering our donors right now. We shouldn't be asking for them for gifts, but honestly, I think that you should be doing the opposite. 
You should be reaching out. You should be ramping up communication. You should be telling them what your needs are and asking for their support. Those who can give will. And so instead of ignoring your donors, pretending it's not happening, um, staying away, do the opposite. This week, I've seen several and been involved with several solicitations. Um, we wrote an email to our donors letting them know what was going on at the organization, what kind of reaction and preparation we were making and what kind of additional funds we were gonna need at various organizations and donors stepped up in really big ways and yours will too. Finally, I just wanna say that as I've been signed up for so many conferences to attend and speak at this spring, of course, they've all been canceled. I'm actually a little bit shocked at how some of the conferences have not adapted better and provided more online learning opportunities. I've been providing, as you know, online opportunities uh, to learn for years. So while you're home, even if the kids are running around, it's a chance for you to gain new skills. And so, of course, I've had for years my Mastering Major Gifts course. So if you've always wanted to start fundraising in big ways from individuals, you might think about it's a great time while you're home uh, to brush up or learn new skills. And you probably also know that I created the online resource, the Capital Campaign Toolkit. So if your organization is thinking about or in the middle of a capital campaign or wants to do a mini campaign during this time of need, um, we have set up the Capital Campaign Toolkit to be all online and virtual, including support from some of the best campaign experts in the country. And so those are two resources that you can check out while you're home and looking for new skills and new ways of connecting with your donors and staying in touch and at the top of your fundraising game. The last thing I'll leave you with is that those organizations during the last recession in 2008, those organizations that fired their development director, eliminated their fundraising budget, stopped fundraising and paused were the ones that suffered the most. It took them years to come out of that recession. The organizations that stayed the course, continued with their plans, continued to work with their donors, um, continued their outreach, they raised actually more in many cases than they had set their goals. And so the last thing I want you to do right now is to stop fundraising. I know we're facing unprecedented times and entering an age one that we could never have imagined. But what I do know is that your clients and your mission and your organization remain as important or maybe more so than ever before. And it's time to ramp up your fundraising, ramp up your communication with donors and work the plan and stay at it. I'm here for you and I look forward to um, hearing from you in the days and weeks ahead. So reach out, I'm here to answer your questions and I look forward to talking with you soon. Take care.